Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to visit the TCT show at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. TCT stands for Time Compression Technologies and the TCT show is one of the world's largest 3D printing exhibitions and we can see all kinds of things here, the latest in personal 3D printing, industrial 3D printing, all kinds of amazing 3D prints, and also related hardware like 3D scanners. So let's see what we can find at TCT 2017. Today, the majority of 3D printers build objects by extruding a thermoplastic. At the entry level of the market, here at TCT we have machines from established players like XYZ Printing and Tier Time, as well as newcomers such as Shining 3D and Panaspace. Manufacturers of more expensive and professional desktop models then include Lulzbot with their Mini and Taz models, Leapfrog with their impressive large hardware, and also BCN 3D technologies. Particularly of interest on the BCN 3D stand is a new printer called the SIG Max, which can use its dual heads to build objects in either duplication mode or mirror mode. Here, on the Hawk 3D Proto stand, we can see a SIG Max working in duplication mode, producing two batches of the same object and so doubling printing capacity. Meanwhile, this SIGMAX on the BCN 3D stand is working in mirror mode to produce an object and its symmetrical pair simultaneously. This really is a great process to watch, with the functionality having been requested by BCN 3D's customers in order to increase their iteration speed and shorten design times. Another well-respected manufacturer of professional-grade desktop hardware is Ultimaker, who are showcasing their Ultimaker 3. While traditionally Ultimaker and similar printers have been used by hobbyists, they are increasingly finding industrial application. For example, Volkswagen is now using Ultimakers to produce manufacturing tools, jigs and fixtures such as those we can see on display. This has resulted in a 95% reduction in tool development time for Volkswagen, as well as substantial cost savings. Also showcasing thermoplastic prototypes and low-run final parts are industrial 3D printing giant Stratasys with areas of application including motor racing. Stratasys manufacture very large 3D production systems such as this Fortis 450MC which is seen here on the SYS stand. Nearby, 3D platform are demonstrating hardware that will fabricate very large thermoplastic objects. With a build envelope of about 1 meter by 1 meter by 0.5 meters, the 3DP work series portfolio can be configured to customer requirement and can produce large printouts such as this, and this, and this. Meanwhile, back on the Lulzbot stand, James Bruton from xrobots.co.uk has been 3D printing and assembling this electric Ironman skateboard, which seems rather powerful. I wonder how James will get on when he tests it out. Rather than making objects from thermoplastics, some 3D printers use light to solidify a photocurable resin. Leaders in this field include Envision Tech, who are showcasing a large number of very high resolution prints. As you can see, some of these are casting masters for highly intricate items of jewellery. Envision Tech also have a long track record in dental 3D printing, with their printers and materials now facilitating the direct 3D printout of replacement teeth. Similarly, manufacturing printers that rely on VAT photopolymerization are Form Labs. Here you can see an object being printed on their Form 2 with a laser selectively solidifying successive object layers on the base of a vat of liquid photopolymer, with the object then being raised for recoating after each layer is printed. Once again, the quality of the final printouts is superb, with the range of build materials continuing to increase. Yet other photopolymerization 3D printers spray photocurable resins and set them solid with UV light. Masters of this 3D printing method are Stratasys, who offer many different printers that fabricate objects using their Polyjet technology. 
Again, quality is really good, as you can see by looking at this two-part mould. In addition, some Polyjet printers, such as this Object 500 Connex 3 and the J750, can produce multicolour and multi-material prints. This is achieved by spraying and solidifying different resins during printout. Full colour Polyjet 3D printing is expensive, but the results really speak for themselves. Also at TCT, we have several manufacturers of 3D printers that build objects from plastic or metal powders. By fusing or sintering layers of metal powders, highly dense, high quality metal objects can be created. These are increasingly being used as final parts in the aerospace, medical and other sectors. Some manufacturers of direct metal 3D printers are long-standing market players such as 3D systems. However, in the past year, GE has invested heavily in direct metal additive manufacturing with the sector now expanding rapidly. Another traditional manufacturer which has recently started to sell powder-based 3D printing hardware is HP. The company's jet fusion technology currently produces plastic parts from a nylon build material PA-12 and consists of a printer together with a processing station for part removal and cleanup as well as material loading. Another recent and notable manufacturer of powder-based 3D printers is Sinterit, who sell their laser desktop system for just under 5,000 euros. This is an incredibly low price for a 3D printer that creates plastic objects by selective laser sintering or SLS and the quality of the resultant printouts is very good indeed. It really is amazing to see this kind of additive manufacturing technology becoming available at this price point. TCT is awash with 3D printing innovation. For example, here we have the beta version of the Dragonfly 2020 from Nano Dimension. This can additively manufacture prototype printed circuit boards using inkjet deposition and dielectric inks. Over on the Colorfab stand, they have a new material extrusion filament called NGen Lux. This has a fantastic surface quality and includes light diffusion additives. These scatter light rays in many dimensions, resulting in a unique surface that appears to have a metallic sheen. Sadly, the full effect is lost when filming it on camera. But I would predict that a lot of hobbyists and professional designers are going to be using NGen Lux in the near future. Another innovation is the Da Vinci Colour from XYZ Printing, which is the world's first 3D colour inkjet filament printer. This builds objects from a single PLA thermoplastic, while also infusing the surface with coloured inks. It really is great to see a CMYK printhead in material extrusion hardware, and the printouts it creates are very impressive. The Da Vinci Colour is priced at £3,199 including taxes, and launches in November 2017. Another development of note comes from Desktop Metal who have a system for directly producing metal objects on the desktop. Their technology is called Bound Metal Deposition and uses a metal powder encapsulated in plastic rods that are supplied to the printer in cartridges. The solid rods are heated and extruded from the printhead so creating a green object that is post-processed in a debinding station to create a delicate brown part. This is then sintered in a microwave enhanced furnace at a temperature of 1400 degrees C. Here at the top of the screen we can see a green part as it was printed and below it the same part after sintering. And at the bottom we can also see some of the bound metal rods but of the system's build material. After sintering, the final part can also be polished, as we can see here on the left, with the sintered part for comparison on the right. Some of my favourite prints at TCT this year range from this large 3D printed chess set by 3D Platform, to several alien creatures, to this prototype chair. This is featured on the SYS stand, and aside from the cushion and some metal rods, was 3D printed on a Strassus Fortus 450MC. Another very notable object is the Adidas Futurecraft 4D Sports Shoe, 
on the carbon stand. This has a 3D printed midsole which was manufactured using a carbon 3D printer with its continuous liquid interface technology. The shoe will be one of the first mass market products to feature 3D printing and as you can see has won a TCT award for the application of 3D printing in a consumer product. Another object that I really like is this electric skateboard made from giant 3D printed Lego bricks. Like the Iron Man skateboard we saw earlier, this is the work of James Bruton and you can see it being constructed and tested on his X-Robots YouTube channel. Over on the Tritec 3D stand we find this fantastic medical model. This superbly demonstrates the multi-colour, multi-material capabilities of a Stratasys J750 3D printer and is both amazing and slightly horrific at the same time. Finally, guarding the stand of Laser Prototypes Europe or LPE, we have this reproduction of Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. This 3D print is laser centred in nylon and very well finished. Amazingly, even the eyes are 3D printed and really bring the model to life. If TCT needs saving from galactic threats, it will therefore be in safe baby tree hands. TCT remains the place to see the latest and the greatest in 3D printing, and I very much enjoyed my visit to the show. For more information on 3D printing, you can go to explainingthefuture.com, not explainingcomputers.com, or you can look in my book, 3D Printing, 3rd Edition. But now that's it from TCT. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.